CCTVs, my friend. They're everywhere. But why should Big Brother be the only one that can spy on innocent civilians without their permission? Over the next few weeks, we're gonna try to make our own motion detecting CCTV notification system. I say we because I need someone to blame it on if it fails. This is all your fault. All right, let's sketch. Okay, here's our list of must-haves. Obviously, we gotta have a camera and some type of controller that lets us remotely view it. And it would be nice if it could send us an alert notification if it detects motion. I think a Raspberry Pi would be best for the controller, and then you can use almost any type of webcam. I'm just gonna use the Pi Cam to free up any USB ports. What we're gonna look at first in this series is creating email alerts. You've got mail. I chose that topic first because I just finished showing you how to set up an email server on your Raspberry Pi. So the first step is to set up your Raspberry Pi, and I've covered this many, many times before. But what the heck, I'm feeling repetitive. All right, take this, put it here. Go here, download this. Then go here and download this. Use this to copy this to this. And when it's done, remove this from this and put it in this. Connect all the peripherals and give that Raspberry some juice. And we're at the desktop. All right, there's a few things we need to do to set this up. Go to the menu, preferences, Raspberry Pi configuration and expand the file system. Then make sure both the camera and SSH are enabled and if you want to, change your keyboard localization properties. Apply these changes, but before you reboot, go ahead and connect to your home wireless network. Then set a static IP address that doesn't conflict with anything else on your network. Now you can go ahead and reboot that sucker. Normally I'd advise using Python 3, but the webcam software we'll be using isn't yet compatible with it. So we're forced to use Python 2.7. Feel free to use this interface to write Python code if you want, but you can actually just use the terminal. Type Python and you get the same prompt that we saw in the official program. Then to exit, type this. It's standard practice in Python to create your programs in a virtual container to organize the code and its dependencies. This is called a virtual environment. So I'm going to pretend like I know what I'm doing and go ahead and use it. Start by updating and upgrading the repositories and software. Then use the Python pip installer to install the virtual environment software. To use it, type virtual env in the project name to create a new virtual environment. Then to activate it, type this. Now we can create our programs and dependencies from within it. And if you want to exit out of it, type deactivate. If you want to streamline things, you can also install this virtual environment wrapper program, set it up, and activate it. Then all you have to do is type mkvirtualenv to make a new virtual machine and activate it. You deactivate it the same way and if you wanted to work on it again, just type work on. Then to remove your virtual machine, you can type rm virtual machine. Okay, enough stalling. Let's create our program that can send emails. So create a new virtual environment and call it mailer. Then within it, use a text editor to make a Python script called pi underscore mail dot py. For those of you that are new to Python, all the examples I'm gonna be using were taken directly from the official Python documentation. Okay, let's begin by importing some multi-purpose internet mail extension libraries. The multi part for setting up our message and the text for setting up the body of the message. Let's create a from variable and set it equal to the email that we're sending it from and a to variable and set it equal to the email or emails that we'll be sending it to. Use commas to separate more than one recipient. All right, next we can set up the message. Start by assigning the type, which will be mixed, adding a subject, adding the from email and the to email, and then creating the body message in plain text, and then attach it to the message itself. All we have to do now is send it, and there's two ways of doing this. The first way is intended for those of you that set up a Citadel email server that I showed you in my last tutorial. To send an email through Citadel, start by pointing to the send mail program file on your Raspberry Pi. Then we need to import the OS library and open the send mail file path in write mode. Then write our message to it and close it out. Save it and run it in Python. If it completed without any errors, then check your mail to see if it was sent. Ah, I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, so that worked, but now we need to attach an image. It'll eventually be extracted from our camera, but for now, I'm just going to download one. Then go back to your Python file and let's add a new MIME image library. Then let's create a variable, set it to our image file name, and then read it into a MIME image. Close it and then attach that image to our message. 
Save your changes and then send another email. When testing it out, make sure that your email client supports attachments or else you're not gonna see it. For those of you that didn't set up or don't want a self-hosted email server, you can also send mail through your current email client. I'll be using Gmail as an example. Now, for Gmail users, this isn't gonna work if you have dual authentication enabled. And you also have to go into your security settings and allow insecure connections. If you're okay with both of those, then let's continue. First, you need to remove this and import the SMTP library, and then set a variable to your Gmail username and password. Then remove all this and replace it with these lines of code that set up a server, sends out an LO request, starts the TLS protocol, sends another LO request, logs in, sends the email, and then closes the connection. Now you can save it and run it, and if you don't get any errors, then you should receive the email within a few minutes. The last thing that I wanted to take a look at is text messaging. If you look at this website, you'll see that there are a lot of phone carriers that have a way to send text messages from email. It generally requires the user's phone number, an ad symbol, and then the carrier name. So adding that to your mailing list should send you a notification through email and through text. Well, my friends, we are on our way to creating a really awesome CCTV project. Don't forget to check out the project page for more details on this specific project. And I've also started a playlist that'll contain all the videos that are gonna be in this series. What idea would you like me to cover next? Let me know at tinkernaut.com slash ideas. Click here to watch my last video. If you'd like to support my show, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, or donate at tinkernaut.com slash donate. You can also click on one of these ads that are around the video if you want. I won't blame you. All right, that is it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.